Hello, and welcome to Padina Talhabs, which is Maltese for bread pudding. Uh, if you have a couple of stale loaves of bread uh, lying around, don't throw them away. Uh, you can turn them into this delicious treat, uh, which is kind of a cross between, say, Christmas cake and brownies and bread pudding that you might be used to. So I'm trying two different recipes here for the first recipe. Uh, it's a little bit different uh, doing uh, soft butter, sugar, walnuts, eggs, cocoa powder, uh, baking powder, dates, uh, sultanas and raisins, some apple, some orange zest or juice, and of course a large loaf of bread. And then for the second one, uh, we're using uh, basically the same things, a little bit more sugar. Uh, this one's got custard powder and corn flour, cocoa powder. Uh, some mixed fruit, which I'll describe later, chopped walnuts, some vanilla extract, and some brandy or some whiskey. So I wanted to try both recipes and see which one I liked the best. So step number one is pretty easy. Uh, we're going to soak this bread in uh, milk. So it's about uh, two cups of milk there. Uh, and then we're also going to add uh, water just to top it up and make sure the bread's completely submerged. And then we'll let that soak for 20 minutes. Well, while that's soaking, we'll start padina number one. So we're just gonna mix together some of the wet ingredients. We got the butter, we got the sugar, a couple of beaten eggs. And we'll mix that all together, give it a good stir. I forgot to uh, show this part, but we got to drain that bread of all its liquid. Uh, I'll show that later on in the video. So drain the bread and add in your uh, butter and sugar mixture and just give that all a good stirring together. Mix it all up. All right, we're going to add in our chopped apples. All right, that's the chopped dates. We'll throw those in there. And then it's the mix of raisins and sultanas. Throw them in. Give it a good stir, get it all nicely mixed up. All right, add in your baking powder. So the other recipe did not have baking powder in it, so there's another difference. Okay, orange zest. Gives it a nice fruity flavor. Citrusy, fruity flavor. Also juicing uh, one half of that orange in there as well. Also something that the other recipe didn't have. Another good stir. All right, next is uh, some chopped walnuts, cocoa powder, and that's it. Okay, so here's the sec start of the second recipe, and uh, this is where I'm going to show you the uh, draining of that fluid again. So it's half milk, half water, basically. Some recipes are all milk, some recipes are all water, so I decided to do half and half. You really can't go wrong. All right, so just sort of gently press. Make sure you get as much of that liquid off of there as you can, because otherwise the whole thing will be way too loose. All right, so pudina number two, sugar and eggs. This one, we're gonna add the two tablespoons of custard powder. Stir it all up. I'm going to add that to the drained bread. And mix that all together. Add in our cocoa powder. Right. 
Add in the two tablespoons of corn flour. That was something that the first recipe did not have was corn flour. So we'll get that in there. Now we're gonna add our mixed fruit. So I didn't list it in the ingredients, but uh, 500 grams of so chocolate chips, glazed uh, cherries, some chopped pitted dates, some raisins and sultanas, and some orange zest. A whole bunch of stuff. All right, uh, also something unique about this recipe was uh, some vanilla extract. I used half a capful. I might actually go with a full capful the next time around because I could hardly taste it in the results. So maybe try a whole cap. Thing with Padina is you really can't go wrong. You can add almost anything. Yeah, so this one also has the brandy. I used about, uh, it was about 40 mils. So about half that little measuring spoon or measuring cup. Gives it a nice flavor. Okay, so two totally different recipes. And yeah, like I was saying, uh, Padina, you can do almost anything. Anything you've got around, basically. Whatever your tastes are, uh, whatever you like, you can put that in there. So this one's got a lot more walnuts in it. All right, those are both all stirred up. So ungreased dish. Doesn't need to be greased. These are pretty uh, moist uh, recipes. And then I just garnished it with the rest of the uh, halved uh, glazed cherries. All right, here comes uh, recipe number one. All right, now that's all gonna go into the oven for, I said uh, 45 to 50 minutes, but I think I had them each in there for about 55 minutes. Basically, you just want to, uh, it might have even been an hour, I can't remember now, just keep poking it until uh, the uh, little poking thing comes out clean, and that's how you'll know it's fully cooked. And there's the uh, finished result. A couple of totally different pudinas, and we're gonna taste test them right now. Okay, we are going to taste test the two pudina recipes. So here is one of them, looks pretty dark, the cherries look nice. This one, a little lighter, but you can see all the apple pieces and other things that are in there. We're going to try them out, see which one turned out better. All right, here we go. Moment of truth. Ooh, nice and crispy on top, that's a good sign. Pretty good. Okay. Number two. Looking pretty good. They smell amazing. Alright. Move this over. Okay, so Christina's gonna try this one first. This was the one, I can't remember. This is the one with the more apples and no, no flour and stuff. Looks more pudding -y. Survey says. Tastes like I remember Pudina. It's good. It's good, but it's not sweet enough, I think, I think eh? Mm. Right, let's try, try this one. Oof, way denser. Or way more dense, I should say. Mm. 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 
one. Yeah, me too. So this one's got a deeper, sort of richer flavor to it. More chocolatey, not overpowering with chocolate. Uh, nice and sweet, but just a just an overall more flavorful taste than the other one. So, yeah, two thumbs up on that one. Okay, there you have it.